We are the Bowtie Travelers. Welcome to Prague. The Kingdom of Bohemia may have become the modern Czech Republic, but its spirit lives on in Prague. Prague, the city of a hundred spire, an enchanting city with beautiful buildings and bridges, soaring spires and bustling squares. It has a unique allure. Prague the capital city of the Czech Republic is bisected by the Sava River. It has been nicknamed the city of a hundred spires. With our three days packed itinerary, we hope to satiate our passion of sightseeing. With this magical city of cathedrals, gold-tipped towers and church domes, which is regarded by many as one of Europe's most charming, colorful and beautiful cities. In these three days, we will sightsee amongst others, Prague Castle, Charles Bridge, Old Town Square, Wenceslas Square, Jewish Quarter, Franz Kafka Museum and many more. And we hope this will inspire you for your next sightseeing adventure to Prague. Day 1 Prague Castle Charles Bridge Or Town Square Dancing House Prague Castle has been an important symbol of Czech state for more than a thousand years. It was founded in the 9th century and became the seat of Czech rulers and later president. Today, the president of Czech Republic rules from here and it is the premier tourist attraction in Prague. The castle, one of the largest complexes in the world, is made up of historical palaces, offices, church and fortification buildings, gardens and picturesque spots. It covers an area of 45 hectares. The panoramic view of Prague Castle is believed to be one of the most spectacular in the world. You can have great view of Prague in different viewpoints on the castle ground. We had the opportunity to enjoy the exquisite taste of Czech sausage on the custom ground. The dominant structure within the complex and the most recognizable is St. Vitus Cathedral. To some visitors, St. Vitus is Prague Castle, but it is just one of many historical buildings within the castle walls. St. Vitus Cathedral is the largest and the most important temple in Prague. 
So this is a beautiful Gothic cathedral inside the uh, Prague Castle uh, complex. This looks great and magnificent. The coronations of kings of Bohemia were held there until 1836. It is one of the best examples of Gothic architecture. From Prague Castle, there is a 13 minute walk to Charles Bridge. Charles Bridge is on the top of every Prague visitor's must-see list. It is also popular with chair artists, musicians and souvenir vendors who stand like both sides of the bridge year-round. Before the stone bridge was built, there was a wooden bridge here around the 10th century. Charles Bridge, spanning the Vitara River with 16 pillars, is rich in statues and decorative lamps, and it catches the eye immediately with its beautiful Gothic bridge towers on both ends. Both towers can be climbed for a view of Prague and the bridge from above. Strolling across Charles Bridge is everybody's favorite activity in Prague. From St. Charles Bridge, there is 11 minutes walk to the Old Town Square. Where does the true heart of Prague beat? On the old town square of course. Welcome. It is precisely here that winding lanes of the old town run in order to spill out onto the most beautiful square in Prague. <laughs> Crowded with tourists. Prague's Old Town Square pulse with energy. The elegant tower of the town hall with the world famous astronomical clock. The proud silhouette of the fairy tale tin cathedral. The monumental church of St. Nicholas and countless multicolored houses of many styles. Land displays a unique atmosphere which will captivate all those who decide to take a look at each other. <laughs> A 13-minute tram ride will take you from the Old Town Square 
to the dancing house. Dancing House is set in a fine location by the Vitara River in Prague. Its design is unique and especially striking in the city center because it is a modern building surrounded by historic architecture. Critics of the building pointed out that it doesn't fit into its surroundings. But after several years, it is regarded as one of the most interesting Prague buildings from the end of the previous century. This is the top of the dancing house and it also offers some great views of the city. And there from far, I can see the St. Vitus uh, Cathedral. You've just been there. The top floor of the dancing house is the only part of the building open to the public and is home to one of the city's leading restaurants. Day 2 The Jewish Quarter Wenslas Square Quarter is a small area known as Josephov, named after the Emperor Joseph II, whose reforms helped to ease living conditions for the Jewish. The Jewish Quarter contains the remains of Prague's former Jewish ghetto. Most significant historical buildings were saved from destruction, and today they remain a testimony to the history of Jews in Prague. The Jewish quarter has six synagogues, including Mezer Synagogue, the Spanish Synagogue, the Old New Synagogue, the Pinkas Synagogue, the Jewish Ceremonial Hall, and the Old Jewish Cemetery, the most remarkable of its kind in Europe. We are entering the Spanish Synagogue in uh, Prague. And this is one of the most beautiful synagogues in Europe. Look at this ceiling. It's just beautiful, the ceiling. Yeah, no wonder they are saying that it's the most beautiful synagogue in Europe. I guess they are telling the truth. Pinkas Synagogue is the second oldest building in the Prague ghetto. Today, its importance lies in its role as a memorial to the 80,000 victims of the Holocaust from Bohemia and Moravia, whose names are hand painted on the walls. Located next to the old Jewish cemetery, the ceremonial hall was built in the neo-Romanesque style in 1906-1908. The first floor once housed a room for the ritual washing of the dead. On the second floor was the burial society's club room. Old Jewish Cemetery is the oldest grave that dates back to 1439. The Old Jewish Cemetery of Prague Jewish Quarter is the only cemetery where the Jews were allowed to bury their dead. This was reformed by Joseph II and they were allowed to bury elsewhere as the Old Jewish Cemetery was bursting at over capacity. This is said to be the largest Jewish cemetery in Europe. It's 
definitely large this cemetery from the entrance since we enter we are still walking through the tombstones from the Jewish quarter there is a 14 minute metal ride to Wenceslas Square Wesla Square is the commercial and administrative center of the city as well as the site of important social and historical events. Here, you will find cinemas, theaters, banks, hotels, restaurants, dozens of small and large shops, and administrative centers. At the top of Wenceslas Square is the Monumental National Museum and just off to the left is the Prague State Opera. In front of the National Museum, a statue of St. Wenceslas on his horse cuts a striking figure. Day 3 Franz Kafka's Spinning Head Franz Kafka Museum Zisco Television Tower Located in a busy shopping center in Prague, this twisting and reflexive sculpture depicting the head of writer Franz Kafka is the latest kinetic artwork by controversial Czech artist David Czerny. Installed in 2014, the enormous mirrored bust is comprised of 42 independently driven layers of stainless steel and weighs in at some 45 tons. This is the spinning head of Franz Katka, a novelist and short story writer. This is his monument uh, in Prague. The piece brilliantly reveals Kafka's tortured personality and a relenting self doubt that plagued him his entire life. From Kafka's spinning head, there is a 12 minute tram ride to Franz Kafka's museum. On our way, to Franz Kafka's museum, we came across the narrowest street in Prague, just a minute walk to the Franz Kafka's museum. Prague's narrowest street is so tiny that traffic lights have been installed to stop people colliding as they walk down to the 19.6 inch wide gap. The street is not actually a real street, but in fact, one of the last fire brigade passes left in Prague. The traffic lights were installed for fun and thanks to the coverage from a few publications on the internet, it turned into a tourist attraction. The Frank Kafka Museum is situated in the renovated Ergat Brickworks factory, complete with an interesting and unique courtyard sculptural fountain by David Journey in the charming quarter of Lesser Town on the embankment of the winding Vitala River. <laughs> The fountain's basin is made of bronze and shaped like the Czech Republic. 
standing in the fountain opposite one another are mechanical statues of men standing 210 cm tall with bronze penises urinating. Wow, they are actually pissing on the Czech Republic map. This is Czech Republic map, yeah? I think it's a statement, I don't know what, so which statement, this is why, why they are pissing on it. From Franz Kafka Museum, there is 11 minutes tram ride to Ziskov TV Tower. The television tower in the capital of the Czech Republic, Ziskov Television Tower, has a unique design. Built during the communist period between 1985 and 1982, the transmitter was put into operation on the 18th of February 1992. From the top of a hill in the Ziskov district, which takes its name, is well above the traditional city skyline. It is the tallest building in Prague and it creates a unique panorama of Prague and has become an essential part of the cosmopolis. This is the Ziskov TV Tower. It was once voted the ugliest building in the world.